Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the disorders of secondary hemostasis. Already we have discussed about the disorders of primary hemostasis. Now disorders of secondary hemostasis. So you all you know it, okay, already you know it. That secondary hemostasis is all about the clotting factors. Now, where is the problem? So, there is problem in the clotting factors. Mainly, it's a deficiency. Deficiency of the clotting factors is going to cause secondary hemostatic related problems. Now, here, there will be much more bleeding. There is bleeding into the organs, bleeding into the uh, joints, bleeding from the IV sites. Okay. So, it little bit more bleeding because the clotting is not happening. So, let me write here the disorders of secondary hemostasis all deal with deficiencies. Deficiency of clotting factors. Okay, deficiencies. Now, the first disorder that I am going to discuss is called as hemophilia. A. Okay, hemophilia A. So, in the name itself, it's a hemo means blood loving. So, here the blood loving in the sense they are going to bleed more. Okay, they will be bleeding, bleeding. So, hemophilia A. So, A is something similar to 8. A, 8. Right? So, it's a deficiency of clotting factor number 8. So, clotting factor number 8 deficiency is going to cause the hemophilia A. Now, my question to you is clotting factor number 8 is involved in which pathway? Factor 8 is involved in intrinsic pathway. Okay? So, 12, 11, 9, 8. These are all involved in the intrinsic pathway. As there is a deficiency of this clotting factor number 8, which pathway is going to be affected? Intrinsic pathway is affected. So, as the intrinsic pathway is affected, now tell me what happened to PT, PTT times. First of all, let's come from beginning. What about the platelet count? Sir, platelet count is going to be normal. There is no problem with the platelets. Platelet count is normal. What about the bleeding time? Bleeding time is also normal. Now, PT, PTT. Sir, PT is going to be normal. Normal. Why? Because PT measures extrinsic pathway 7 and 3. What about the PTT? So, PTT is going to be elevated. The time required for the intrinsic pathway, PTT is going to be elevated. So, because 8 is involved in intrinsic pathway, PTT measures intrinsic pathway. So, now as there is deficiency, it takes longer time for the intrinsic pathway to occur. Okay. So, PTT is going to be elevated. What about the, um, what else can you see in the labs? There is deficiency of factor 8. Factor 8 levels in the plasma is going to go down. Okay, so these are some important points which I want you to know. What is the treatment done for these patients? Simple recombinant factor 8. Okay, recombinant factor 8 should be supplemented for these patients. Now, the second disorder is hemophilia B. Hemophilia B. Simple. Okay, just like all the labs are going to be exactly like this platelet count, everything is going to be similar. Only thing which is different is deficiency of which factor deficiency, sir? That's the different. So there is deficiency of factor number 9. Okay, ninth factor deficiency. This hemophilia B is also called as Christmas disease. Okay, Christmas disease. Okay. So, Hemophilia B, simple, Christmas disease, deficiency of factor number 9, all labs are going to be exactly same thing and the treatment, what is the treatment done? The treatment is recombinant factor 9, okay, recombinant factor number 9, done. So, the next uh, disease that I am going to dis uh, discuss under the disorders of secondary hemostasis are von Willebrand's disease, von Willebrand's disease. So, what is happening in this von Willebrand's disease? Simple, there is a deficiency of von Willebrand's factor, von Willebrand factor deficiency. Now, you can ask me, so von Willebrand factor is involved in platelet adhesion, right? So, then why we are discussing it under the secondary hemostasis? Secondary hemostasis is all about the factors, clotting factors. 
So if there is a deficiency of von Willebrand factor, then why we are discussing it under the secondary hemostasis? I will explain you. See, this von Willebrand factor helps in platelet adhesion. True, but also von Willebrand factor stabilizes stabilizes factor eight. Okay, factor 8 is going to be stabilized with the help of von Willebrand factor. Now, as there is a deficiency of the von Willebrand factor, platelet adhesion is not going to occur. As there is no platelet adhesion, what about the bleeding time? Bleeding time is going to increase. Well, regardless of the normal platelet count, if you look at the platelet count, platelet count is going to be normal. Okay, normal platelet count, but the bleeding time is going to be elevated. More bleeding time is seen because the platelet aggregation is not happening, uh, platelet adhesion is not happening. Platelets are there, but platelet adhesion is not there because of the deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Now, what about the PT PTT? So PTT is elevated. Why PTT is elevated? Because von Willebrand factor is not there, so factor eight is not going to be properly activated, not stabilized. That causes the increase in the time duration for the PTT. PTT time is elevated, the PT time is going to be normal. Okay, so this is how the laps are going to be, this is how the laps are going to be in a patient who is having von Willebrand's disease. Now in von Willebrand's disease, what else you should know is the treatment, the treatment of von Willebrand's disease, the drug of choice is a drug called as desmopressin. So what exactly is this desmopressin? Desmopressin is something similar to vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. So what this desmopressin do is, it's going to stimulate V2 receptors. It's V2 agonist. So what is this V2 uh, receptor? What is this V2 agonism and how it is going to help in treatment of the von Willebrand's disease is? Let me tell you, see this is the blood vessel, right? Now on the surface of the endothelial cells, okay, in the blood vessel, see these are the endothelial cells. On the surface of the endothelial cells, there is V2 receptor present. Okay, V2 receptor is present. Okay, imagine this is the V2 receptor. Now, this V2 receptor is stimulated by this drug called as a desmopressin. When you stimulate this V2 receptors, this endothelial cells are going to release von Willebrand's factor. So, the problem is a deficiency, von Willebrand factor deficiency. So, deficiency is treated. So, V2 receptor stimulation by desmopressin is a treatment for von Willebrand's disease. Okay, done. Three things that we have completed, hemophilia A, factor 8 deficiency, hemophilia B, factor 9 deficiency and von Willebrand factor that is deficiency of von Willebrand factor, simple von Willebrand's disease, deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Now after this, let's discuss about vitamin K deficiency, vitamin K deficiency. So who will get this vitamin K deficiency? Okay. See, vitamin K deficiency is going to occur especially in the newborns. Okay, in the newborns, the patient is going to have the vitamin K deficiency because newborns are not having proper gut flora in you and me. For example, say in you and me, we are having the proper gut flora, almost 50 trillion bacteria are there in our guts. These flora will synthesize the vitamin K for us. Also, we will get the vitamin K from the green leafy vegetables. The baby is not eating the green leafy vegetables, right? So, newborns are having deficiency of this vitamin K. So, newborns can have vitamin K deficiency and they can have the bleeding also if there is any trauma. So, that's why for newborns, we will give injection. Okay, immediately after birth, the first vitamin we give to the newborns is injection of vitamin K. It's practiced worldwide. So, vitamin K injections are given for the newborn. Okay. Next, who else can get vitamin K deficient is People who are using inadvertent antibiotics, antibiotics, excessive usage of antibiotics, inadvertent use of antibiotics, okay. So, you already know it. See, if you use too much amount of antibiotics, then antibiotics are going to kill the gut bacteria, okay, kill gut bacteria. So, if the gut bacteria are not there, means proper amount of vitamin K synthesis is not going to happen, okay. Next. The third reason why you can get vitamin K deficiency is malabsorption. Whatever the vitamin K that is coming through the vegetables, you can only absorb vitamin K when it is dissolved in fat. You know, I hope you already know it. Vitamin A 
DEK. ADEK are fat soluble vitamins. Okay, they are fat soluble vitamins. Sir, K is also a fat soluble vitamin. Now, in certain malabsorptive conditions, okay, for example, say there is a pancreatic insufficiency. Pancreatic insufficiency. Might be because of uh, he is having chronic pancreatitis. See, imagine the patient is having chronic pancreatitis. Okay, now the patient is an alcoholic. He is drinking, drinking that will cause acute pancreatitis and multiple episodes, multiple, multiple episodes of acute pancreatitis can lead to chronic pancreatitis where now there is pancreatic insufficiency. Now the pancreas is totally calcified. It is no longer producing any enzymes. So no pancreatic lipase, no coal lipase. The lipases are not coming. The lipids are not properly getting like you know digested. The fats, fat digestion is not happening. Without fat digestion, you cannot absorb the fat related vitamins. Fat like you know fat soluble vitamins are not going to be absorbed. Okay, so pancreatic insufficiency can lead to vitamins deficiency. Okay, vitamin A D K deficiency, vitamin K is not going to come into your body. Are certain diseases malabsorptive conditions like celiac disease? Okay. Celiac disease or Crohn's disease. So any malabsorptive conditions, there are many malabsorptive conditions which can lead to steatorrhea like somatostatinomas. See many conditions, the patient can have malabsorp malabsorption. In any malabsorption condition, the fat soluble vitamins absorption is going to be impaired. So what happens without vitamin K? I have explained to you. Vitamin K is required for gamma carboxylation of Okay, gamma carboxylation of what? 2, 7, 9, 10. Now, gamma carboxylation of 2, 7, 9, 10 is not going to occur. So, these clotting factors are not going to be activated. Without these clotting factors, clotting cannot occur. So, disorder of secondary hemostasis, vitamin K deficiency is going to cause the clotting related problems. So, 2, 7, 9, 10 are not activated. That can cause clotting related issues. Done. So, okay. So, vitamin K deficiency is going to cause deficiency of 2, 7, 9, 10. Next, one Willebrand disease. You know it. Desmopressin is the drug of choice, V2 receptor stimulation. Okay. Now, Von Willebrand's disease, the patient is going to have elevated PTT. Why? Because the factor 8 is not getting properly stabilized. Our hemophilia A and B, 8 and 9 deficiency. Hemophilia 8, sorry, hemophilia A, factor number 8 deficiency and hemophilia B, factor number 9 deficiency is going to cause deep uh, internal bleedings. The patient is going to have hemarthrosis, uh, bleeding from the, like, you know, the sites of operation, bleeding from the IV sites, the patient is going to have bleeding. Even for a small trauma also, even if you try to do some surgery, when you give an incision, bleeding, 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 uncontrollable bleeding is going to occur. Okay, simple replace the deficient factors. Deficient, uh, like, you know, if the patient is having 8 factor deficiency, give the 8 factor number 8. If the, if the person is having factor number 9 deficiency, give the factor number 9, simple as simple as that. Okay, so with this, the disorders of secondary hemostasis are also completed. The one point which I have forgot is, so Von Willebrand's disease, every time they will ask you in your exam, which inheritance pattern, autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. That's the one point which I have forgot. With this, this topic is completed. In the next video, we will discuss about disseminated intravascular coagulation and also we will discuss about the normal fibrinolysis. Okay guys, thank you.